grab your favorite beverage, kick up your feet as you ascend with me into the joy portal of soul reflections, fresh perspectives, fun ideas, and wisdom. Light to light and heart to heart. Smile and breathe even deeper as together we will soar above the perception of all hurdles and shine brightly as the light we are. Hey, namaste and welcome to Light Laughter and Lattes. My name is Jerry Habstreet. I'm an Avesa quantum healer, medical intuitive, self-ascension intuitive counselor, and your friend and soul connection for the next hour. So happy full moon, everyone. And welcome to Oneness Talk Radio listeners, Oneness Talk Radio YouTube, Anchor, and all the affiliates that Anchor broadcasts to. And today I'm doing something a little bit different. So if you would like to see this podcast live, you can go to Oneness Talk Radio YouTube, And hopefully, if all goes well, you'll be able to watch the interview as well. And you can send me and my guest a comment. We would love that. We would always like to hear from you. And so, welcome. And today, I am excited. I have with me Lisa Barnett, and she's founder of the Kashik Knowing School of Wisdom and author of From Questioning to Knowing. And this is such an important time to be in a space of knowing, because if you're at all aware or connected to the media, there's a whole lot of mistruths being shared everywhere. So it is so important that we are able to really access our own inner knowing. And hopefully, Lisa, you can shed some light on that for us all. Welcome. Thank you, Jerry. I am really excited to be here with you. And especially kind of, oh, as the energy takes another leap with the full moons and we have just been leaping through this year, it's been a little crazy. Um, And I'm going to say that I'm feeling a lot of excitement. So that's the good news, that the Akashic Record Keepers keep saying that we really are clearing old paradigms, old karmic patterns, old beliefs. We have to shine that light on the, the you know, dark junk that we swept under the carpet, you know, 2,000 years ago <laughs> in order to really ascend. And so we really are in the ascension process, kind of the no matter what it looks like. So I just really try and not watch anything on TV because, right? I don't know if there's any truth flowing through there. (laughs) Well, and I think that, you know, I don't think people are totally aware that we've got the yin and the yon, right? It's the, the symbol with half black, half white. So as many are ascending, it's going to be the opposite on the opposite end of it. So it is the higher some go, the lower others go to maintain that balance. So if, and so the ascension isn't being broadcast on the media. <laughs> so you can really just see the dark side of this symbol, you know, constantly if you put your focus there. But the really, I mean, people who are, with their intention to ascend, have opened their hearts, done the work, and many, many are waking up right now. Um, Younger groups, 21-year-olds, I've talked to several of them who know in their hearts, like, we can turn this all around in no time at all. So there's, you're right, there's this great upliftment, and there's great opportunity right now if we just kind of all stick together and keep our focus in the right direction. Right. (laughs) (laughs) But I want to get to your specialty, which is the Akashic Records. And so can you share with everyone, you know, what are the Akashic Records? Absolutely. So the Akashic Records are the recording of your soul's journey through all time space continuum. So from the moment you individuate from source, that journey that you're on is 
automatically kind of like I always say, if you happen to, you know, if one day we ever do this, or if you, if you always wore a GoPro strapped to your head, right? And you just recorded your day, it would be something like that. You would have a huge library with every one of those books or videos, whatever you, you know, the way, however you think of it. But that would be recorded from every life, every dimension, here on Earth, in between other planets, planes, and worlds. And so um, the fascinating thing when we start to access our own Akashic records is to see how ancient we are, to see the worlds we've lived in or learn about them in some way, um, and, and to realize that we have so much more wisdom and knowledge then we often give ourselves credit for because we often think of ourselves as like one life, one body, one time, right? Mm -hmm. So um, the truth is you're really an ancient and wise soul and that information is stored for you just really waiting to be accessed. So how did you, um, how did you begin this Akashic Record journey? <laughs> Um, my journey started about 60 years ago, actually. I was just three years old, and I realized at one moment that I was trapped in a body. I actually remember trying to tell my mother something, not having the words, certainly didn't have the vocabulary at three, and kind of having that like, oh, I'm not communicating telepathically anymore. I'm in this little flesh body, this little flesh body, right, at three years old. And I started to tell her that I wanted to go back. Um, and of course, she couldn't help me out there. <laughs> so <laughs> so um, when I was about, you know, 14 years old, I started reading what I could get my hands on. And, you know, for me, luckily, we were living in California. Um, it was the late 60s, early 70s. I was in high school. I started reading all the esoteric information, um, you know, and just doing what you do in California at that age, at that day, <laughs> at that time, <laughs> but really discovering, you know, the multidimensionality of the universe. And so I started my, um, my journey very young. And then when I was older, I was actually working as more of an intuitive en energy healer and every once in a while, I get this big booming voice. And that went on for almost five years. And I didn't know who was talking to me because I knew about the Akashic Records. I'd actually go up to the kind of gates of the records. This is how I was trained. You can go to the gate and ask for information and energy to fill your client back up after healing, but you're not allowed in. And that literally made sense many years later when the record keepers told me that they had pulled the vibration of the Akashic field away from earth for about a thousand years because in the dark ages the energy was was misused so so i just kind of got this big expansive information which was really more about people's soul plan kind of it was like who they've been, why they came, karmic patterns, soul contracts, big information. And I'd always think, wow, I was just kind of too, I don't know, something. I'd never dawned on me to say, who are you? And who is talking to me and giving me this information? So it took me almost five years to figure it out. And then when I did, I was like, oh, wild, I can actually access the Akashic Records. They're trying to get my attention. And so, um, they said, yes, you have been one of us. You have been a record keeper in the beginning of your individuation from source. Um, and we'd like you to help us to bring this work back to the world. And I said, yes. And that's what I've been doing since then. Nice. So did you spend quite some time digging into your records first before you decided oh, yeah. to help others? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> absolutely. Um, because I'd already been on a spiritual path most of my life, I certainly spent a good year just, you know, channeling the record keepers. I would take a hike every day and have long conversations with them about everything. And I wrote pages and pages, you know, I filled up notebook after notebook after notebook with journaling. And so when they asked me to write a book about the Akashic records, I was like, I don't know how to do that. I'm 
you know, I've never been an author, I've never written anything. And they said, you know, just look at that stack of notebooks you have. <laughs> you've, got, you've got a lot of information in there. And the other thing that was kind of fun was they said, yes, you have been an author in many different lifetimes. You can go back and reclaim that information and energy and gift, right? That ability. You can reclaim this information from your Akashic records and bring it into present time. So it's so useful. You know, many people think about the Akashic records as this kind of esoteric information about some past life or other, but literally it's very useful in this lifetime because we can clear trauma and blocks from our childhood or yesterday or a past life and reclaim those gifts and talents that we wanted to bring into this lifetime. So very, very useful to kind of get unstuck and move forward in this life. Wow, you, you're giving me a great idea because I've been getting the nudge that I should probably write a book as well. And I, same question, I'm like, well, what? I've been doing, I've been on my path for 20 some years and I've got, I do have a bazillion notebooks and wow, I could go access, access some old knowledge that I knew before and, and make it new again. Yeah. Yes, you really can. And the other thing I always tell my students is I, I teach people how to do this for themselves because the record keepers, that was really what they asked me to do was to start a school and to bring this work back uh, to humanities, to empower humanity. And so they gave me a very simple five-step wisdom prayer system. You don't have to meditate for years to do this. It's, it's very simple. They've given me clear access prayers, which are energetic keys to really shift into the vibration of the Akashic field. And so, um, so when I go to write a book now, I literally open my records and, you know, I'll open like say the, um, the records of the people who are here to read my book and I just will channel the book. So I'll just sit down for days, you know, kind of straight and just kind of type whatever comes through me. And that's how I've written my two books. There's The Infinite Wisdom of the Akashic Records is the second one. And I'm in the process of writing two more. Oh, I love that. I love being able, the idea of writing a book through pure wisdom as opposed to engaging the mind right. <laughs> and writing from the mind. <laughs> I agree. That's what I have to say. It's like, I just have to get out of the way and let it come through. Otherwise, you know, I go into judgment and doubt and on and on. So yes, just letting it flow through so much easier. <laughs> Lifetimes of learning to get the mind out of the way. That's, yes. that's a true act in mastery. <laughs> so what, what, what is maybe the number one reason people want to access the Akashic Records? I mean, so I know people want materialistic things, but from, I tend to not go that route. From a spiritual aspect, how can they really help people? Well, you know, what I think is important to know and this is actually one of the books I'm writing on, is that your soul made a plan before you embodied this time. And in that plan, you wrote soul contracts with people, numerous people. We often write 25 or 50 soul contracts. And some of them are about supporting each other. And some of them are about um, completing old patterns, what, what we often call karma, lessons we didn't learn in other lifetimes. We come back often with the same people, sometimes in a different um, uh, uh, <laughs> relationship, but, right. but we may come back with some of those same people to learn and to grow, to be the forgiveness, to understand challenges, right? To, to support other people, no matter what it looks like. And so these are really all um, about our soul's growth. We come to earth for soul growth. So we really come, right, to be that, that soul having a human journey and remembering the truth of who we are as infinite and divine um, souls. 
And so it's all about this, the spiritual journey, if you look at it that way. But um, often people will come to me because they'll say, is my soul contract complete? Like, can I get divorced now? So, <laughs> um, because sometimes we'll, one person will go on a spiritual path and the other person, you know, especially after you've been married 20 years or 30 years or longer even, will go, we are not seeing eye to eye anymore. We are going down different roads. And so it's interesting because we can look at those soul contracts. And the nice thing is sometimes we can clear old energy. Sometimes we can realize how we've completed that contract and, and know that it's done. And then we can also choose to say, update it or upgrade it, rewrite it. Say you're feeling out of kilter with that partner, but you still love them. They may be, you know, your life partner. They may be the parent of your children, you know, and, and so you may be like, well, I'm not really, I don't really want to dump them, but we're just out of sync. What can we do? And you literally can do some energetic work around that. You can learn more maybe about the next step or how to help and support that person to make some changes. Um, so we can see that bigger picture. To me, the Akashic Records is always about that kind of big view. Who were we before? What did we come to complete? What karmic patterns did we want to work on? Where are we? What else can we do? Is it time to throw in the towel or rewrite the contract? Very, lots, very useful. <laughs> lots of information. Lots of, yeah. lots of information in there. And um and I think that for so many of us, it's about the validation, right? Right. No, it, truly, because there's not a lot in the outer world that will validate what we know is true inside of us. And so it is so nice to get that validation. They're like, I knew this was so, I knew this was true. I, you know, and to validate your knowings all along, um, it's important. Yes, it's huge. <laughs> and that can be like really um, a, a very big shift in our own consciousness when we, when we believe something like, I really feel like this is complete. I feel like I've supported this person. I feel like it's time for me to go off and to really go on my own solo journey now. And, you know, when the record keepers say, yes, that was complete, maybe even five years ago, you're like, whew. Because I think we often are afraid of kind of, you know, stepping out there and doing something that people might consider odd or, you know, unusual in some way or other, mm. where they're like, okay, I really, I knew it in my heart. And now I really feel that wisdom from my soul. It goes even deeper. And then we're like, it gives us the impetus to move forward. And I think we're creatures of habit. So, you know, even when a contract or something is done, we just keep doing what we know <laughs> and do it over and over and over again. It's like the habit of the habit. So <laughs> right. absolutely. Talk a little bit about um, I know, vows of poverty. Mm. Oh, yes. So often people will come to me. And so, you know, I do both. I love to teach because I think that this is so important and so empowering for people to have to be able to do this by themselves, for themselves, every day, whenever they have a question. Um, uh, and of course, I do Akashic Record readings and healing sessions for clients. So often people will come to me and they'll say, I feel so blocked around money. You know, I, I work really hard. I actually have a good job, but no matter what, it's just, I'm always broke, you know? <laughs> I get a bonus and the car breaks, right? Or something like that. And so, um, when we ask in the Akashic Records what is creating this, there are many levels and layers. And one of the reasons I love working in the Akashic Records is they usually will give me three to five answers for one question. So it could be a vow of poverty. Most of us who are, are on a spiritual path have been on a spiritual path many, many lifetimes. And that means that you are probably a monk or a priest or a nun or some sort of, um, you know, some sort of either spiritual student or teacher or seeker. And often we take vows of poverty. So if you were, imagine a priest or a nun in um, a church 
in the last couple thousand years, you probably would have taken a vow of poverty, chastity, and obedience. And I think they're all really good to get rid of. <laughs> you think? <laughs> I don't want any of them, honestly, right? So one of those things I love to clear for people. I'm like, yes, let's dump those. And that's one level. So we took those vows, but there's no end to the vow. And I've double checked with people I know who have actually um, been nuns. I, ha I have um, a good family friend who was a nun for a while. And I said, when you took those vows, did they have an end date to them in any way? <laughs> she said, no, absolutely not. You know, would you please clear mine for me? Because <laughs> I'm no longer a nun. And so if you imagine when you take a marriage vow, it says until death do us part. But in those vows of poverty, we don't say until I die. It's just, you know, I vow to not charge for my God-given gifts is kind of more what the vow says. Right. And so here we are as healers and as, as you know, intuitive um, readers or psychics or channels. And we're like, Oh, I can't really charge for that because, you know, that's a divine gift and we just feel bad taking money for it. And so getting rid of those vows of poverty, very useful. <laughs> and then there's mul multiple layers. We have ancestral beliefs that have really been energetically passed down through our family lineage. Often they're around um, survival and having to work really, really hard just to survive. And so we have this energy of where I work really hard to not really make much money, enough to feed myself, but you know, not much more. And so there's that's an ancestral um, kind of energy that gets passed down to us. And we often also, because we live hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of friggin' lives here on earth, we've had lifetimes where we've been really wealthy and maybe you got um, murdered when you were riding your horse from one town to another and you know somebody saw that you had nice clothes on and they shot you with an arrow and and took your gold and ran away right and there you are you know bleeding to death going i never want to be rich again because <laughs> that got me killed right so we have a variety of different um vows, soul contracts. Sometimes we have ancestral curses, actually, that can pass down through the family lineage. And then, of course, we have those conscious and unconscious beliefs from our childhood. And all of that make, you know, multiple layers that, that are important to clear and work through in order to kind of really be free to receive the abundance of the universe that's really here for us. Right. So what, what would you say if someone's going to sit down and they want to, they have a question they would want a higher answer to, what would be the difference between accessing the Akashic records or the higher aspect of yourself? Well, um, <laughs> so the best way I can explain it is because for many years, for about eight years, I started out really as an intuitive psychic reader healer. And, but when the record keepers would come in and talk to me, I really noticed the difference in information and energy from when I was speaking to a client's higher self and when I was speaking to the record keepers. And um, I would say, even though I access quite a bit of past life information for people, even back then, what I would see is kind of the energy was much more infinite and went so far back and, and into other worlds. And it can go into the future, which I tend to use more for reclaiming energy that's not serving us because nothing is written in stone. So your future is not actually written in stone, even though it may be out there. Mm -hmm. But um, the depth and the variety of information and the expanse was so much greater than, than um, what I found that the higher self was more interested usually in giving us. The higher self was much more focused on this life, you know, the, the more present time, present life, even though they can give you lots of information about some other past lives. 
the ability to heal in the quantum field, to reclaim gifts and talents, again, really by going into the Akashic Records, which is, which is pure source energy, moving more um, fully into the Akashic, um, the quantum field, where is where the Akashic Records are stored in source energy, and really being able to do healing in that level and reclaiming. So not only can we literally transform some old pains and traumas from other lifetimes, we can reclaim those gifts and talents also. So I just found it kind of a, a, a bigger, more expansive um, energy and information all, all around. Hmm. So in your school, so you mentioned there's five five elements or, or processes that you teach people to, if they want to access the records is that correct? Well, it's a five-step wisdom prayer system so okay. it's really just there's a really there's a intention prayer we write we we learn to ask questions to go deeper into the records and get a lot of information there's access prayers which actually align um, i've been given six different access prayers because we're all unique and there's two more I need to stop and write which would be like eight different access prayers and we and we um we try them out to see what resonates the most with us because you're all really galactic star seeds every one of us I've never met a person who's only come to earth we start in out in the more galactic energies before we ever come to earth and so the record keepers say it's almost like finding the comfy chair for you to sit down and open that library and read those books of your history so if you're um more syrian from the dog star sirius if you're more pleiadian there's a access prayer for um, people who feel more connected to the pleiades or to um uh, uh Arcturus. So there's there are six different prayers so that so that it makes it easier for people to resonate and go deeper into their records. Because I notice every time that I, I teach a class that there will be usually two prayers that work pretty well and one that doesn't of the three that I teach in say course one. And I always think if I had only taught you that one prayer well you wouldn't be getting into the records right and so um so that's why the record keeper said to me we'll give you a bunch of different galactic prayers so that more people can access the records so so that's one step but there's a variety and then of course you know i teach people all sorts of tools about being able to to filling up with your highest akashic energy and light and upgrading your your um, energy body and and we can really bring in new codes and and um, really upgrade the physical body so the energy in the akashic records i find just really phenomenal because it's very infinite i think it just you know it only ends at wherever i can <laughs> go or not go right and so um it's very amazing work yeah, it sounds like it sounds like you could spend days just there <laughs> and be completely disconnected from everything outside of it. <laughs> right. That's why I used to like to go and give myself like an hour, hour and a half a day to be in nature, to be grounded, but to be in this expansive energy and to have these conversations. And, you know, back then, 25 years ago, um, you know when we first start doing our own work a lot of it is about working through the blocks what's holding me back what's that fear where is it coming from what else can i know about it you know like i got triggered and got angry what you know where does that come from how can i heal that so we can go um you know really day in and day out and ask questions every single day so is there some so people at home that are listening to this they maybe wouldn't go as far as to dive into it and take classes on it, but are, are there things that our listeners can do to maybe access the Kashik records on their own? Um, yes, yeah, so my 
my other book, which I'm like, I'm looking for because <laughs> it's probably sitting right here. So this is the, um, the infinite wisdom of the Akashic records. You can get it on, um, Amazon. This is actually a how to book. Oh, nice. And this actually teaches you my five step wisdom prayer system. So it's easy. A lot of people like to read it and then we'll, um, you know, a lot of people get it. I'll get emails from people. Oh my gosh, I just read your book and I'm accessing the records and that's very fun. And then sometimes people will say, I want to go deeper and I want to take more of your workshops. And so then they'll come and they'll do my online workshops. Um, there's the, the workshop after the infinite wisdom of the Akashic records after kind of course one, um, I teach people to go much deeper and to heal in the quantum field and to be able to work with their past lives and, and clear um, trauma and reclaim gifts and talents and, you know, move throughout time and space and to work with your ancestral lineage and to work with creativity and channeling your own books or music or paintings or you know, cooking, whatever it is that people are drawn to work on or with, the, re the Akashic Records are very phenomenal in that way. So I teach, I teach that also in the second course. And um, so, so often people will start with the book and then come find me. <laughs> well, so it sounds unlimited what you can do once you access it. I mean, there's... You can ask, you know, I would say you can ask anything about yourself because mm -hmm. it's very much about you because really honestly we're here to live our lives and do our journeys and learn and to grow as souls and to share that light but it's not about you know why did so and so do something or you know what about them it's it's really about um what about my relationship with them what can I know? What can I change? How can I grow? But yeah, we can really ask almost anything. And then in the third course, I actually teach this as, um, as a career choice. And so I've, I've trained, I don't know, probably over 50 now, um, certified Akasha consultants who are all over the world, who, who um, I do a seven-month program to really train you to go deep into reading the records for other people. Because I know so many people are looking for new career choices right now, right? <laughs> We're like, okay, I'm done with the corporate world. I want to do a spiritual job. And so, um, so you, you know, they, you start by with Akashic self-mastery because just like you asked in the very beginning, it's so important for us to do our own work and learn about ourselves and all those aspects of us and who we've been and what we've done and all the whys before we go on and, and do this sort of work for someone else, right? So we have that history, we have that, that understanding in a way. And I think that that way we, um, we like heal ourselves of our judgments or our triggers. And so it's about, you know, the buttons that get pushed that make us angry or upset or scared or, you know, or go into judgment. And we actually work with all of that in career mastery because I think it's important if you want to do this sort of work as a, as a healer. And I'm sure, as you know, you've, you know, done tons and tons of work on yourself. Like you were saying, all those books. <laughs> Nonstop. <laughs> right. It's a lifelong it, process. If you, <laughs> it's important. It is. So if you ever talk to a healer who hasn't worked on themselves, I would go the other way. Right. Well, find another one. <laughs> they can't help you with what they haven't solved in themselves. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Oh, and, and I'm always thinking about our children, too, and thinking about all the wonderful things that we could be teaching them. I do a lot of substitute teaching at the school system, and boy, wouldn't it be fantastic if we could, you know, bring in things like this, teach them to access their wisdom at a young age. I mean, they start out with it, but it kind of gets trained out of them, or they don't learn to trust their knowings. Yeah. And so some well, I, you know, I really, I've, I've always said I've got three kids, but now they're in their mid twenties. And so, um, three of them, I have identical, um, twin girls, uh, who are 24 now and, and they're best friends. So the three of them all took my online Akashic workshop this last go around. And so they've all graduated from college and right now they're all kind of hanging out in my house. <laughs> 
know, not that much work for them to do. So, so I'm going from, I went from an empty nester to having everybody move home again. But, um, but yeah, so, you know, even in at 20 to start to access your own Akashic records is profound, but I always think that if we could just teach those kindergartners boundaries, fill themselves up with their own golden energy and make themselves a beautiful little golden egg, that it's, you know, learning boundaries, not walling yourself off, but just, I'm me and I'm full of, you know, my energy and, and I can love you, but I don't need to have you in my space, right? Right. <laughs> so that would save them from being kind of, I think, the... Because, of course, my children are all empaths, you know, as so many are so sensitive. Um, I think it really helps that sensitivity at a young age. And to be able to understand and differentiate, you know, this is what I feel like. And then if you're in my field, I feel different. Maybe I feel you're sad or you're anger or you're happy. But it's it feels different than me. So when we can learn at a young age what you truly feel like, right? When you align with your own soul plan and energy, it's, it really is a huge leg up on the world. You can choose what you want to be and do because you know for yourself, for your soul, compared to what everybody else wants you to do and think and say, you know, so yeah. <laughs> so what do you say about, um, Children that are born, do you think they pick their family or do you think they just randomly land somewhere? <laughs> no, we pick it. And, you know, it's interesting because um, we write this whole soul plan. And part of that is, who am I going to live with? Where am I going to live? Right. Um, we sometimes pick a family, you know, it doesn't mean that you have a soul contract with both your mother and your father. We sometimes pick a family for someone else in the family. So I occasionally will tell this story. Um, my nephew came to live with us when he was 13. And he considers me and my husband to be his parents. You know, I was very blessed. He just got married and I got to, his mother passed away many years ago. Um, and I got to walk you know, down the aisle with him, and, and it's very beautiful. His soul contract and my soul contract was with him compared to with my brother and his, um, his mom. And so it's not always straight up and simple. We, I've seen people who occasionally pick a family because they want to go back to a specific, like, place, land-wise, and live there and grow up there because they have a karmic pattern that they really want to work through. And I've seen this here um, in the U.S. and kind of um, from souls who were, who were um, killed or died really tragically, Native Americans who wanted to go back and be on that land or near that land, they may pick a family because of that. So there's some unusual reasons, you know, why we pick a family. It's obviously not like always because they're going to support us. Sometimes it's about the challenge. A lot of times it's about that karmic pattern we want to learn about and grow through. But I do believe in some sense, you know, with one person or another, it might be to be with that particular sibling um, that we do make those choices. And again, this is all part of that kind of big plan you wrote before you embodied. Right. Well, and what I seem to find amongst the people who are waking up or light workers, you could call them, oftentimes they come into families that don't support them um, because they're being called to really, really own what they believe in. And so they're thrown the exact opposite. They're thrown you know, everything that would, would get in the way of what they believe so that they can really, really own it. And I got the opposite of that. I got parents that supported me, but I, I seem to be the anomaly from everyone that I've traveled with and done group work with. They yeah. seem to, you know, grow up in real strong religions where they were incredibly restricted. <laughs> yes. No, I completely agree. Um, I, I was very blessed. I always, 
the record keepers have said to me something like, I've come about a thousand times to the planet. And way back before this round of humanity, I was here as a whale, whenever, <laughs> probably during some ice age or something. But um, there's times where you say, okay, I'll go back to, to help with this energy, with this information, <laughs> with it, but I'm going to do it, you know, like, I'm not going to do it with karma attached. <laughs> I'm not going to do it the hard way. But so many of the light workers um, that I've worked with also have come, were born into abusive families, and there's a huge soul contract on the planet to end abuse, whether it's, you know, verbal or emotional or, or sexual abuse. Um, and so there are so many light workers said, I will be born into an abusive family so that the buck will stop here. I will not pass that on to my children as has been happening for, you know, hundreds or thousands of years. And so um, I know I've worked with so many light workers who are like, why would I pick that? And it's like, you did it because you knew you were a huge soul, a, you know, a bright light and you could heal it and go on and you could, help other people who are having that, you know, experience. And you can teach other people, you know, ways to heal that, ways that you did use to heal some of that emotional pain and trauma and to move into a space of forgiveness. And, and so we really do it. Um, I really believe that, you know, we do it to, to teach it, to share it and, and to complete those patterns. So um, we're, again, we're so ancient. We're so much more than we think we are. Right. So could, yeah. That's that. the, the gift of, um, the gift of what, well, many call black sheep. They'll be born into a family that has this certain pattern that they've been going through. And all of a sudden along comes the one <laughs> that's completely different from everyone else. And like, they're a pattern changer. They're, you know, we're going to turn this whole thing around in a whole new direction. Yeah. And, you know, oftentimes they're shunned by the family. I know, I know families like this who have actually shunned that person who came, came in to, to change things in a, in a more soul-based way. <laughs> right. Yeah. And sometimes they can and sometimes they can't, right? And I think that when they can't, it's very, very frustrating because, you know, it's, again, we often feel like we failed you know, in a soul contract or something. But, you know, the truth of re the record keepers always tell me is that all you can do is the best that you can do. You can, you know, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink, right? You can be the love and the light and the compassion and understanding and, and a good role model for all those other people in your family, but you can't make them change their, their mind or change their consciousness. So, they will again, you know, they'll come back again and again to make that shift until they can learn and grow and wake up. Right. Oh, that's all anyone can be is really a mentor, holding the energy of that which you know is true and, and trust that that's going to affect the people around you that need to be affected or are, are looking for that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and sometimes you see the... Um, like the nieces or nephews, you know, like you might have siblings who are, you know, whatever, stayed all right wing or whatever it might be, but the nieces and the nephews are attracted to you and they're like, they get you. And so you're, you get to be there for them and be a role model for them. And so it can be very beautiful in that sort of way. So I really think, yeah, just, you know, remembering and no matter what that energy is rippling out as you're being light, that light is rippling out into the world. And whether you know it, whether you get to see it in action or not, I think that's one of the, the um, important things for us to, you know, know, to remember, to feel that we're doing our work and we're sharing our gifts and our loves, our love. And it is affecting, it is raising the vibration of the planet, whether you see it or not. I agree. I do agree. Um, so what would you say is maybe the greatest treasure or wisdom that you've gained from the gatekeepers? Is that what you're, you're calling them? Yeah, record keepers. Record keepers. There you go. Yeah. Um, I would say really the realization and and not just in a 
kind of a mental, you know, kind of like, oh yeah, I get it. But that that deep experience of of being so infinite, of having so many lives and having been having done so many different things and living in other planets and dimensions, because then we can start to really reclaim and call that all back into us. And we're we're waking those gifts up in this body now when we can have that experience and deeply know that we're so much more than just this. Mm -hmm. And and to me, I think that was probably the kind of the biggest shift um, in consciousness and gift was to be able to to own that and to know that and to connect um, to all of that. And at different times, like I said, to go back and reclaim the lifetimes in which I was a published author and, and asked to reclaim those gifts of being able to write with ease and know that I've done this before. So being able to access those specific gifts when I want them, but to also see some of those really um, kind of big, uh, like otherworldly lifetimes, lifetimes in Sirius, lifetimes, you know, in Andromeda or or in Lemuria. I mean, so wherever it is, but to go, okay, wow, if I've been that and done that, I can be that and do that again. Right. Right. We're infinite and unlimited. Yeah. Which, which, which it, it, it's the opposite of what the outer world is telling us right now, right? <laughs> <laughs> right. So what a breath of fresh air, you know, to come to the knowing that we're infinite and unlimited. <laughs> yeah. And, and to be, to be able to, um, I just plug that. Apparently my battery is not totally unlimited. <laughs> <laughs> Are we draining uh, your battery? <laughs> I keep that plug handy. There it is. All good. Um, so so the gift to me also of being able to access your own Akashic records is to be able to open those records and go into that energy of pure divine love. It's just pure source energy. It often feels like you're just wrapped in that softest, fluffiest little baby blanket. Or sometimes I see it almost like being wrapped in the wings of an angel or just floating out a cloud, you know, I mean, we see things the way we see things. Of course, they filter through our brains, but, but we really are moving into pure source, unconditional love. And that is an experience to have every day also is very transformational and raises your vibration, right? To be in the love, you're moving, you are becoming that love. And the more we do it, the more natural it becomes for us. And so, having that kind of access is very profound in transforming our life in just very simple ways, like opening the records and saying, just, you know, show me the love, <laughs> remind me of the truth of who I am, especially on those challenging days. Right. Well, you just, that's the perfect lead in because, <laughs> because we are right now full moon. Today's a full moon day. We're recording it on the, on Monday, August 3rd. Um, so if you could guide us into one of your meditations and I'll let you choose. I think we talked a bit about the, the symbol one. Mm -hmm. And, um, so we can use this energy, go into that space of love. And so everyone can get a little taste of it and hopefully, um, we'll add some healing to ourselves and add to the collective humanity at the same time. Perfect. I love it. So I call this. A couple of different things but I usually call it something like the soul symbol meditation but it's each of us has a very unique signature soul signature which I see that signature as a symbol so I've kind of mushed those words together but basically what we're going to do is we are going to expand out around the world so that we can leave that soul symbol in, with an intention out in the world to find those people, to connect to those people who are here to support you in some way to create whatever that is that you would like to create now. So today and going forward, um, 
So we will take a moment and do that intention, but first, and we'll do that in the middle of the meditation, but first, let me just, we can just sit back and close our eyes. Oh, and come with me. As we just drop out of our little active brain and down into our heart. And we invite our heart chakra to open and expand, to fill our body, our whole torso. And I like to see the heart as a golden spinning ball of light. And as we focus on it, it gets stronger, a little faster and a little bigger. And the record keepers always tell us that the easiest way to create and manifest on this earth plane is to bring our third chakra and our fourth ch chakra, our solar plexus and our heart together. Because our third chakra is also very much about creating in this dimension. So let's invite our third chakra to open and spin and let that turn into a beautiful spinning ball. And if you like to see them in a little bit more classic chakra colors, we can just see that third chakra is that yellow or golden spinning ball and then our heart can be that beautiful emerald spinning green. And as they spin and expand, they overlap and merge. And so where your third chakra and your fourth chakra are overlapping and merging is a beautiful, powerful area called the wish fulfilling jewel. And so we're going to invite a wish fulfilling jewel energy to expand out, out around the world. So it covers your town or city, your state, your country, and it starts to encircle the globe. So it's a beautiful golden green energy, sparkly and clear, and it expands up and down vertically, horizontally, every which way out around the solar system, even out into the galaxy. And in that beautiful wish fulfilling jewel in this sparkly golden green energy is your soul symbol, the signature of you. And so let's just take a moment and set an intention to create something new, whatever it might be for you, to connect to people, to support you. Maybe you're looking for a new relationship, a new friendship, maybe even a new job to connect to those people or the people who will support you in creating the new book you're writing or the new project you're creating, whatever it might be. Setting that intention, we invite our soul symbol, that amazing signature of you to expand out into the galactic field all around the solar system, all around the earth. And we just intend to connect with the people who are here to support us in our creative endeavors for the highest ease and grace in all of our lives.
And it looks so beautiful. There's just sparkly little symbols all over the galaxy connecting to the people who are here su to support you. And so we leave our soul symbols out there and we just draw our energy back, back down into our solar system. Down around the earth, back into our city or town, back into our house or building all the way back down into our bodies. And we invite our heart chakra and our third chakra to shrink back down to fit back in our bodies, or they might be a little bit more expanded so they're filling our auric field. Whatever is comfortable for you is perfect. And we just feel some of those connections awakening in our body or our energy field. When you're ready, just come back and just open your eyes, coming present. Let's just invite our body to ground back down, connect to dear mother earth beneath our feet, getting all the way down into our bodies after that expansive journey because it's important to be embodied and all the way down into our lower um, chakra system, down into our first, second, and third, mm -hmm. to truly manifest with ease on the earth. So I know it's not always fun for us light workers to be really embodied, but the record keepers always say, get all the way down, get grounded, and that will make manifestations so much faster. Agreed, absolutely. <laughs> So Lisa, this was so much fun. We have just like a couple minutes left. So I would love if you could share some of your contact information, your website. So if anyone would like to get a hold of you, they can do that. I would love to. Thank you. My website is akashicknowing.com. And so I'm going to spell Akashic because a lot of people don't know how. <laughs> <laughs> it's A K A S H I C, Akashic Knowing, K N O W I N G dot com. And you'll find information about the upcoming workshop, the next one starting online in October, the first week of October. And you could sign up right now on my website and save $100 if you're interested in learning to do this for yourself. You'll see links to my books, to Akashic Record readings and healing sessions with me. Um, and of course, there is a free guided visualization on my website. So just go to Akashic Knowing and you can download a free meditation and sign up to get my newsletter and find out where I'm speaking and what else is going on and when my new books come out. So I'd love to connect with you. Well, super. Thank you. Thank you for coming on and sharing and thank you for doing what you do. <laughs> thank you, Jerry. It was such a pleasure and joy. And thank you for having me. Absolutely. And everyone, thank you for listening to Light Laughter and Lattes. And until next week, may your days, maybe your week be filled with a whole lot of light and love. Namaste. Thank you for listening in to Light Laughter and Lattes. It has been my honor and pleasure. Please visit jerryhab.wix.com and check out my services and my packages. I work with people in person and from a distance and I also give free 15-minute consultations. And so until next week, may your week be filled with light, laughter, and a whole lot of love. Talk Radio. Hip, fresh, fun. Tune in to an honest portal of positivity 24-7.
Experience Unique Talk Radio from all around the planet, perfectly mixed with music that enchants your soul. Discover Oneness Moments as you relax into three to five minutes of divine inspiration. Claim your oneness today. Oneness Talk Radio. 